Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Asher's and this is... Ivy. So, I got to do some adventuring over the weekend. <laughs> so, I was, um, as probably most of you know, I've been working on this documentary. Um, and I was I spent the day in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, um, hunting some hunting a, a single moth man um but i took my well i took my dom with me my dom ann and um it was fun um did i learn anything new not really no um but did she she learned so much i'm so excited to share about you know about it that's the thing with like taking new people down there is that usually the first time someone goes down there with me um, cause I never go alone is, uh, you know, I, I take them around the, the town, you know, we go to the museum, I give, you know, I give them the tour, they get the basics of things. And so, um, usually that's how it rolls. We're going back next weekend and I'll get into that shortly. But, um, anyway, so, you know, basically the whole experience was just, it's just kind of getting a feel for the area. You know, sometimes you go down there and sometimes, you know, things happen or you end up talking to the right person and, you know, it changes things or whatever. Um, that None of that happened this time. Um, like I said, I didn't really find any new leads. Um, but I kind of did at the same time. So we go down there, we go to the museum and, you know, she checks it out. She's like a kid in a candy shop. She absolutely adored the whole gimmick of the Mothman thing. Like, she fucking loved it. And it was adorable. And uh, we were standing outside, um, kind of standing in a line to take our pictures with the Mothman statue. And um, her and I were kind of talking about it. She's like, yeah, it's a cool, you know, it's, it's a cool little thing. I don't believe in this shit, but it's cool. <laughs> and so I was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, you know, so after that, we, um, you know, we left for a little bit. We went, we got a Mothman pizza and, um, I'm just kind of telling her stories about things and going more in depth with things. And, um, I was telling her about injured cold and I was telling her about Woodrow Derenberger and, um, I was just kind of telling her how I need to get a hold of, you know, Woodrow's daughter because she's still alive and I could interview her for the documentary or whatever. And she's just like, oh, well, you know that's cool and i'm like yeah you know the fact that his daughter has kind of carried on his story because woodrow's dead you know i'm like the fact that you know he's carried she's carried his story means that you know she must believe it and why would you you know why would you believe something like that if your dad's talking about how he has this best friend that's an alien and he visits the planet i mean even as far down to as you know he said he was impregnated by one of these things like and you know, wouldn't you want to, like, distance yourself from that if you thought your dad was just crazy, you know? <laughs> so, but she's met Injured Cold, and she's met Injured, Injured's family, and they all get together for holidays and shit all the time, and so. And I was just explaining that to Anne, and, you know, she kind of got a little more interested. Um, you know, after the museum, you know, shit gets real, and we go down to the TNT area, and she's really a big, like, history buff type of person. She's really into, like, government conspiracies and stuff. And so, you know, when I started explaining to her, like, you know, this is this is the area where most of the sightings took place. Um, you know, it was government owned, just telling her the background of the area and stuff. She kind of started getting a little more interested. Well, we're walking up to one of the bunkers and um, beside your area uh, where, you know, where the walk where the walk path is for the bunkers, it's like this big body of water and it's just completely still. It's weird. It's just it's just a weird area. So we're kind of watching the water for a minute there's a bunch of bullfrogs and they're funny you know so we're just <laughs> enjoying watching the bullfrogs and whatnot and all of a sudden we both see a deer and you know you see a lot of deer out there but it's pretty close you know and, and it was a clear shot for a picture so Anne pulls out her phone and she goes to take a picture while she's pulling out her phone I look at her you know look, watch her pull out her phone and then we both look up and the deer's not there anymore she's like oh the deer's gone and then she's like wait a minute <laughs> where was that deer standing at and we both look off at that general area and there wasn't anywhere for this deer to stand it had to have been standing on the water there was not ground where it would have at least you know if it was even going through the water even and maybe the water's not that deep you'd hear the water moving and, and it, there was none of that so we saw a ghost deer <laughs> i guess um and that really messed with Anne a lot it really did um, and she, 
you know, at that point she wanted to go. I mean, we saw one of the bunkers or whatever, and, and she wanted to leave. And I had my own weird experience, and I have them quite often down there, but you know, whatever. Um, so we left, and uh, we get back into town, and we didn't end up taking our pictures earlier with the moth band um, because the line was long. And we stop, and we're taking more pictures, and um, there's like, uh, like in front of the statue, there's like a clock or whatever, like a town clock. Um, earlier I had noticed some like church bells had gone off for like the hour and I happened to look at the town clock and it said 342 and I was like oh okay well you know that's weird that the clock is wrong but you know Point Pleasant is honestly just a shit town so like it kind of makes sense that their clock is off um, but we were talking about going home at that point and like I remember looking you know we both you know we're looking at the time or whatever and then the church bells start going off. And as we're looking at the time, it's 742. I'm like, that's weird. Why is the clock going off at the 42nd minute and not on the hour like it typically does? So, I, you know, that, so now 42 has, has reached a significance. Um, so I don't know. You know, like I said, some things happen. And has now, you know, I wake up the next morning to this huge, huge message from her. And she's given me all kinds of leads. She's like, you need to contact this person. You need to contact that person. She is a thousand percent sold on this Mothman situation now. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was the ghost deer. <laughs> I don't know if it was the 42, but it's weird. You know, it's, it is it is bizarre because she explicitly said, I don't believe in this. And then, you know, now she's like, she's in it. She's like, let me see what I can find. Well, she might have family ties to um to point pleasant so and she's looking into that um but she's more focused on like the government side of things and like the shipyards and you know she's curious the shipyard you shipyards are still used today but they don't really say what they're used for and so um but she's a great investigator to have and next weekend we're going back down there um except we're not going to point pleasant we're going for the weekend and we're staying in um, braxton county which is where the flatwoods monster incident happened so we're going to be exploring, uh, you know, some some woodland aliens. And uh, I'd like to go back to the TNT area some more, but she, um, I don't know, if, I don't think she will. I think she's really uncomfortable with the idea, idea of going back there. So she even asked, she's like, well, you know, do you need anything else? Do you need to do anything else on Point Pleasant? I'm like, well, yeah, I just kind of just need to be there. You know, making a documentary, I kind of need, well, just like in the case of the deer, had I had a, a camera rolling at that moment, we would have caught that, but... I didn't, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you just need to get a hat with a GoPro on it. So I have this guy who is telling me that he's going to work on the documentary with me, and that's fine. Um, I think he's vying for co-host, but I don't really know if that's what's going to happen or not. It just depends on a lot of factors because it is very much a job, and I need him to treat it like that. Um, he is going with us this weekend, and he purchased a GoPro today. So, um, we're, so we've got the GoPro, I've got my actual video camera, I've got, you know, my, my iPhone, um, you know, everybody else has cell phones. So, I mean, you know, hopefully, but the thing is, it's like keeping up char, you know, you don't want your phones and shit to die in the middle of the woods. Like, so like, it's, and then like the cameras and stuff don't have much of a charge to them. I have a backup camera for my video camera, so I can probably get about probably about four hours out of it and then i don't know about the gopro and then power banks well right well we can have those and then like the fact that we can um you know we're staying there we can just we can go back and go back out you know as needed so um uh, so hopefully we're able to catch some more interesting things of course since the cameras will be rolling nothing will happen <laughs> So that's probably what's what's going to be the case there. But I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that this is uh, is done. You know, originally I was thinking that it was going to be out, uh, you know, next year, 2021, premiering at the festival. Um, but this year I was supposed to have a booth there at the Mothman Festival and it was the festival was being canceled. So um, I don't really know what's going to happen next. Do I just continue with my plan and go next year? And set up my booth. Do I really need to set up a booth? Or do I just try to finish it for next year's festival and see if they'll take it then and show it at the festival? You know, do I still keep the original date? I'm just trying to see what, you know, how this is going to play out exactly. But 
you know, and in, in the meantime, we've had all kinds of synchronicities happening, happening surrounding it. And, um, I'm just trying to <laughs> work through them all and figure out what all they mean and where they're taking me and, and stuff like that. So that's, I'm sure I'll have more moth stories next week after, <laughs> after we go back down there again. So we'll see. Um, but you know, another, another, uh, fan of, of the moth, another moth fan has been created. <laughs> And like I said, she's just been, she's been way excited about it. So I'm curious to see what she finds. She's going to talk to her mom about their, their ties back to Point Pleasant and see, you know, what that's all about. But I've got a ton of people to try to contact because I'm going to try to set up interviews while I'm down there this next weekend and, and all that fun stuff. So we'll see. But anyway, so Ivy told me to watch this show on the last, was it the last episode we were talking about it? I think it was. It was. Yeah. It was. It was. So Ivy had mentioned the show talking about a doctor that um, basically was selling uh, black market babies. And um, so I watched, you know, I watched the show. The show's called Taken at Birth. And it's about Dr. Hicks and his... Juggerthy. Juggerthy, yes. Tom, <laughs> what was it? Thomas Juggerthy Hicks? Thomas Juggerthy. Guys, this guy's middle name is fucking Juggerthy. And if you Google Juggerthy, it's you all you'll find... find Nothing, really, but Dr. Hicks. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, maybe he sold babies because as a baby, he got to really shit into the deal with fucking Juggerthy. <laughs> I was Googling articles on it earlier to talk about for the podcast, and um, I Googled um, Hicks babies because that's what they call the group, and uh, all I could find was stuff on the show. Then I Googled Dr. Hicks, and the only thing it pulled up was, like, local doctors named, like, Dr. Hicks. So... Because me and Ivy were looking at it yesterday, I typed in Juggerthy because the only thing that'll pop up is stuff about this guy. So, and it worked. Anyway, um, yeah, so this guy in like the 50s and 60s was, um, he ran this uh, clinic out in, uh, where was it? McKaysville. McKaysville, Georgia. McKaysville, Georgia. And he, um, he performed illegal abortions there. And because uh, they were illegal at the time, and but but instead he would like convince these women somehow to carry these babies to term, and then he would quote unquote abort them and then sell them uh, on the black market. And so you know they they think he sold about uh, at least two hundred babies. Um, but all of them were like four pounds and some odd ounces too. Yeah, they were all small. Almost all of them were preemies, and then uh, because he would induce labor and you know have them birthed and then send them off. Um, but sometimes he would tell the moms that the babies died, and then he would sell those those babies. Now it seems like most of them were supposed to be some type of late term abortion. But, uh, you know, in some cases it was that they were told that the babies died. Now, I don't know. You know, I was thinking about this. I mean, the, so they've been trying to find the original birth parents. Um, it's this lady, um, Jane Blasio, and she's going around doing all this investigating because she's one of the Hicks babies. And she's kind of leading this investigation. And it's still ongoing. Um, they're still reuniting these babies with the original family members and whatnot. Um, but because we don't know who all the birth moms are, because he would just c get rid of their information completely. Um, uh, he put the adoptive parents on the birth certificate, so it would seem as if they, they were the were actual the parents. Biological parents, right. And so it's like, well, the, ones, the parents that they have found, you know, what if they're lying about being told that the babies were deceased because they don't want to look bad? Because they were already going to have an illegal abortion anyway. Because they were trying to hide the fact that they were pregnant, you know? And so it's like, maybe maybe he didn't, you know? Maybe he didn't actually tell them that they were dead. I, I mean, I don't know. It's just the thought that I had was that, you know, it's a good possibility that those women are lying about that just to save face because they're embarrassed to admit that they were having an abortion. and Especially a late-term right, abortion. Right, right. I mean, they didn't want to have that... They didn't well, want to have that judgment. He was also... I guess there was, like, also some that were quote unquote stillborn but it's like that one lady she had said that she heard her baby so it's like how could he cover that up yeah. you know like right he just was like no you didn't <laughs> <laughs> they were like oh okay <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it was a different time then. It definitely was. And, uh, you know, it, like, especially then, they didn't have the types of drugs that we have now. And, um, you know, they, like, he would put them under, like, a twilight sleep. And I've been in a twilight sleep before. And you definitely remember, like, it's not like you're, but I, I, then again, I don't know what kind of drugs he used exactly, you know, who knows. Um, but they didn't have, like I said, they didn't have the advances to, like, knock someone out completely to, to do this procedure, you know. And so, I don't know. I mean, yeah, she did say that. She, she heard her, you know, she heard the baby crying and he's like, mm, no. And that was the end of it, I guess. And, I mean, she went on to have another. I don't know. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's pretty bizarre. Um, but, you know, these people, they just feel so, um, they feel so out of place. And that's, like, kind of another topic entirely is just adoption in general. You know, most people that are adopted do feel very out of place. You know, they, a lot of them grow up with, with issues. And it's nothing that you can prevent from happening, really. Because it's like, you could lie to them and pretend that you've had them, you know, you, they, you, know, you are the parents, but then if they find out, it fucks with them. And, <laughs> well, and it fucks with your relationship, too. Right, right. So They'll never like... trust you again, right. And so it's like, you know, but then, like, if they know that they're adopted, then they, they'll always grapple with the fact, well, why wasn't I wanted in the first place, you know? And so it's just one of those things that... You know, and these people that Dr. Hicks was selling babies to, they weren't good people. Um, that's not necessarily true. Some of them were probably good people. But he wasn't doing any background checks on these people. You know, he was just like, you got $1,000? Here's the baby. Oh, right, here's the baby. If you aren't here in 24 hours, I give it to the next right. person. <laughs> right, and that was that was what it was. And so, you know, some of these people did end up in, in shitty situations. Well, in the show, you know, one of the adoptees he talked about how horrible of a life he had and you know he was always treated like the black sheep because he was because he didn't belong in the family and it's like why would you even pay money for a child you don't want anyway but i mean it does happen my mom is a prime example of that my mom was adopted um she was well she was taken from her home she wasn't adopted she wasn't completely young but she was taken from her home because of abuse and then she was sent to a you know a family and they adopted her and she had a sister too and they adopted well it wasn't her biological sister they had adopted another child from another situation and they had these two kids and then ended up you know abusing them pretty harshly and eventually they both ended up basically i mean basically in an orphanage they ended up in a children's home um, from a pretty young age on and so it's like why they even adopt kids in the first place well my mom says that her adopted mom that you know originally they were told they couldn't have kids that's why they adopted and everything was fine until all of a sudden the mom couldn't have kids and started having kids of her own and then she kind of lost her mind after that and well i think at that point she probably saw the adopted kids was like not a burden anymore. Yeah, right. more than anything because right. it's like well now I don't need you right. and that's how <laughs> that's it is now up. yeah like her her adopted dad uh, kind of kind of recently he was in the hospital or something he wasn't doing well he was dying and she doesn't really talk to any of them um, you know but she knows enough to know that he was in the hospital or whatever and she was like talking about how weird it would be to show up because those other kids would be there and it's like you know, the fact that she refers to them as, like, those other kids instead of, like, her brother and, you know, her sister. I don't know if there's boys and girls. I don't know what they are. You know, but that's pretty telling because, you know, that's how she sees them. I mean, just total detachment. And, you know, none of these people are really family. She's since connected with her biological father. And uh, he, um, she's got a lot of problems with him also because she just doesn't view him as a parent because... I mean, let's face it, he never really was. And so, you know, so I know the kinds of things that these people are experiencing because I've, I've watched it happen firsthand with my own family. And, like, in the show, they, like, try to reunite some of these people. Sometimes they want to, sometimes they don't. But you just can't really repair that relationship. You really can't. Um, you're not going to view somebody as your parent if they're not your parent, <laughs> you know, and right. they didn't raise you. And that's just well, the way that also, is. also, too, it's like if, you know he did like take this baby mm -hmm. without the mother knowing yeah you know if it was an induced labor and he's like okay well your baby died or your baby was stillborn yeah and then like 40 50 years later 
somebody calls you like, hey, uh, you might have a illegitimate no. child. <laughs> right. And you're just like, oh. or I don't think that's the right term. But, uh, yeah. Well, kind of. I mean, it kind of is. I mean, right. It's a weird. Yeah. You're right. It's a weird shock to their system. And that's what I was saying when we watched it. And the one there was one lady that was like trying to reunite with her mom. And her mom really wasn't interested. And they kind of were trying to make the mom look like the bad guy. And it's like, but you know what? She went to that doctor to have an abortion. She doesn't owe you anything. She doesn't owe you anything. She didn't want to have you. And and that's that. If she wanted to have you, she wouldn't have tried to abort you. Right. It sucks <laughs> and it's fucked up. But, right. but at, at the, the same, same time, time. Right. You're not you're not entitled to any relationship with that person. You don't have to have one because Well, I mean that that situation was a little weird though, because well they met up before like any kind of intervention with Jane Blasio or anything. Right. So like when they had met up, the mother was like introducing her as her daughter. Yeah. So I mean, I can kind of see well, like if she didn't true. like if she met up and she's just like this is my this is Kathy. friend, um, right? Yeah, whatever. You know, but the fact that she claimed her, I think that's that's something pretty major. So for her to kind of like pull back from it again it's like well fuck <laughs> well right you gotta shit or get off the pot I mean make that decision <laughs> so I mean I can kind of see yeah. like where the child is coming from but yeah. at the same time like you said the mother went through what she went through because you know whatever reason whether she didn't want to have it or she couldn't you yeah. know whatever give reason. a good life right. or you know whatever her reasoning was the fact of the matter is is that's what she wanted to do. And that was her choice, right? And so that's what came down to it. So it's like, you know, yeah. I mean, I if like personally, like someone called me and was like, um, your child is is here, you know, which of course I've never adopted out a baby. Um, and you know, unfortunately, when I left the hospital, they gave me mine. So um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know, if, if I was called, or even by like a distant family member. Um, I, I have an estr- I have estranged siblings all over the place, and so like if they want to contact me, I'm not against I'm not against contacting them, you know, or being in contact or answering as many questions as I can or you know whatever um, because I, I just I don't know I mean it's not hurting me to, to give that information I guess and and on the fall it does is help them so I don't understand like the one lady her dad didn't want to meet her and it's like. Why not? You know, <laughs> why not? Why wouldn't you want well, to? Well, I mean, he he's probably got a whole other life now. And... Well, I'm sure he does, but just because you, you meet with that person and maybe answer some questions doesn't commit you to anything. Yeah, but still, that would just, really fuck with somebody. Yeah, that would. That's true, I guess. I, I mean, they're already contacting you. Like, if it were me and they contacted me, like, You've already contacted me. Let's do this. Right. But I also understand, like, people, they can, like, hear that, process it, mm-hmm. and do what they want with it. But then it's like, if they actually go through with it and meet this child that potentially is theirs, then it's, like, reality. Like, it all well, just kind of sets true, in. I, guess. I mean, you know, well, especially in the case of the father, I mean, it most likely wasn't the father's fault. Yeah, you know he. I'm sure he didn't have. Well, he might have had much, and you know he probably had a little bit of say in it. I'm sure, and he's like abort that baby, you know. So, or but I guess it is still know. kind of shocking. Or, yeah, he might not have known at all. I don't know how they figured out who her father was. Uh, they never really explained that. Um, but I mean, I'm sure I could dig into it if if I wanted to, um, you know. But you know, while looking into the situation, well, at the end of it, they disclosed that. Um, one of the quote unquote Hicks babies that they because they've all kind of built their own little family now it's kind of sweet um, yeah and they all meet up actually here in Ohio yeah in Akron, yeah yeah they is... do yeah they do and it's it's a very sweet thing that they all have accepted each other you know they they've all finally in a way gotten that acceptance that they've been looking for for so long even if they still have questions that they, that aren't answered that they still have that sense of belonging somewhere and um. Because my mom says that all the time. People will criticize her relationship with her dad because, again, she was abused as a baby, severely enough to where she was taken from her family. And people are like, you know, why do you talk to him? Why do you do anything for him? Why do you help him at all? And she's just like, you know, nobody gets it. Nobody can understand at all, you know, because nobody else 
is for one adopted two adopted because they were severely abused you know so it's like (laughs) she's you know she definitely does have that weird out of place feeling when talking about her dad and her situation so you know i get it with those people well they talked about one of the hicks babies um or whatever was not actually from mckaysville she was from chattanooga tennessee and so what they're saying is that this is a possible uh, another operation and more babies that are probably out there that were sold and things like that um and and that you know that got me interested so i decided to look into it a little bit and you know black market babies is, is a big thing um they're anywhere nowadays they're anywhere from about five thousand dollars um to upwards to like fifty thousand dollars for for what they call a custom child and you know it's it's still very much a big market now more so in other countries than in america uh, but it happens a lot <laughs> and you know they'll tell the parents they're not really doing late-term abortion like that they're just telling the parents that the baby's died and they're, or they're still born or whatever and they're taking them and they're selling them um and then other things that i i feel like you know probably we won't get another chance to talk about anywhere else is you know there's people out there that have killed pregnant women and taken their babies and you know think or like have like walked into hospitals and you know stolen babies and walked out with them and you know it's like you know i i don't i guess i don't understand the desperation to go to those lengths to to have a baby like the one case um was this this lady um said that she was pregnant or not pregnant or she was she had like baby items and she was on like there's like local facebook groups where you can you know buy and sell things i think facebook has marketplace now so it's a little bit different but before people would just create like local groups where you could like post things that you're selling on the group meet up with the people and buy the stuff it was like a virtual garage sale and um so this lady was going around like posting that she had baby items for sale and she was luring pregnant women to come by them and she you know was kind of trying to pick one and she picked one and um killed her and cut her baby out and took it home and what she did was you know th- th- probably the biggest reason of course she was caught um you know they didn't catch her i don't remember if the baby made it or i don't think the baby did make it um but um the reason her motive for that was because she had told her boyfriend that she was pregnant um, to keep him around and so it's like that's pretty horrifying yeah. <laughs> I mean that's really good that's you gotta be a disgusting piece of shit to do something like that that doesn't even make any sense you know what well, I mean I mean she's committed I guess because, <laughs> well now she is <laughs> for sure <laughs> no I mean yeah it's just that's so bizarre like you know but it's crazy how something like emotion and and a lie can turn into murder you know like it goes that far to turn into like murder and baby stealing you know so it's like and you know but that's kind of what they were talking about with the hicks babies they were wondering how many of these kids were his kids and you know did he father them and you know or did anybody in the family father them or whatever um the one lady they found out she was um the daughter of the mayor of the city and you know so obviously that happened to try to hide the fact that you know he was having some type of affair and so it's like and then i think dr hicks they're still kind of working on identifying all of the all of the all of the babies and see if they are um you know see if see if who's his and who's not i know that like it's come out that like at least one of them has is his and you know there's a good possibility there's more but then they have to find the who the babies are they have to find all the babies if they're still alive, then they can DNA test them. But now they're getting old, you know. That this, again, these are babies born in the fifties and sixties. You know, they're 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 not they don't have have a bunch of time to do all that anymore. So you know, I don't know. It's all a very uh, it's a very interesting story. It, it is. Um, and well, and then like I said, that you know they do it they do it in other countries. You know, there's people that have you know walked in, taken babies, and walked out. I know when I had my daughter at the hospital, um, they put a bracelet on me and they put a bracelet on her mm-hmm. and they match up the bracelet, you know, who and who anybody that walks in and out with that baby. Well, can. that was actually done because uh, people were given wrong babies or 
there was actually a case where the baby had like some medical issues or whatever and it was going to grow up and constantly have medical issues and they had paid a hospital worker to switch their baby with somebody else's. Oh, wow. That's yeah. fucked up. And, uh, <laughs> Can you imagine? Your baby comes out, you're like, I don't want this one. Well, <laughs> Can I I'm, have that one instead? <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure that the when it all came to light, what had actually happened, yeah. the family found out, and they found the other family, and they actually sued them for all of the costs of... You know well, the medical sure. needs and shit. Did they keep the the ba- did, I mean, did they keep the child after that? Have they I think so. Accepted that child in their family. And I think so because I mean, at this point, you did right. You raised it. <laughs> the child was like, how do you? Fi- I mean, how do you? Well, the this? the healthy daughter or child. I can't remember if yeah. it was a boy or a girl. Whatever. Pretty sure it was a girl. She. Um, wanted to go with her old family okay and see kind of like what it was like Mm -hmm. and like they had the option to like it was like a trial period essentially Mm -hmm. and if she was happy they could essentially adopt her because it's all legal shit I guess and she ended up not wanting to stay and went back to her other family Oh, the, okay. the family that wasn't her, <laughs> but the family that raised That's her. Weird. Like, yeah, it was it was really weird. It was on um some talk show. I can't remember what the fuck it was on though. But it was it was all so weird. But yeah, yeah that that's part weird. of the reason why they uh, implemented like the the, the tracking. Yeah. But also because um like there's like volunteers at hospitals yeah. that will hold the babies and yeah. stuff. Well, there's been cases where they actually steal the babies. Okay. So they get attached to them and walk yeah. out. Oh, oh, that's very sad. So, well, I mean, I don't know if they necessarily got attached to them, but they might have just been like, "Oh, I can make some money." Well, right, because it's a, it's a big thing. I mean, and there's been, you know, I've read news articles where like people are. You know, pregnant with their babies, and they intend on selling them, and so they'll they they'll post like a Craigslist ad and shit for them, and it's just it's it's wild. And then like in other countries, like the one I was reading was like some lady was trying to like sell her three month old baby for like two goats or something like that. It's like, you know, it's just it's so bizarre to me. It's so weird that you know life can be so expendable to some of these people. Then again, in other countries, they have different. Uh, you know, I guess different different sets of ethics, I guess. I mean, you know, it, it is very weird. Um, but whereas, like, adopting a child, which I think is really excessive, that shit is expensive. It is just ridiculously overpriced to adopt. Which, and then the criteria that you have to meet in order to do it is even more excessive. Well, and even surrogacy is... That's even more expensive. Right. In, in vitro, that's like... Twenty thousand right. dollars. Right. Like, who the fuck has yeah. that kind of money right. just exactly laying around? Yeah. Not a lot of people, right? It's it, and, it's just excessive for no reason other than to. So I mean, you know, I can understand why people are selling the babies black market because I mean, shit, we've turned you know adoption and child rearing into a business, and it's wild. You know, it's just it's crazy that we've done that, and it's like. You know, I was looking into, in my younger days when I was healthy, um, I was looking into doing, like, like doing the surrogate mother thing. And, um, you know, you get paid. I mean, gosh, they will pay you. <laughs> so yeah, they give money. you, like, monthly allowances, yeah, they essentially. Yeah. They, pay they pay for all your, your, bill, all your medical doctor bills. Doctor visits. Yeah, yeah, all your medical bills. They'll pay for your food. You know, if they want you working out, they'll pay for your gym memberships. I mean, it's kind of like a sugar daddy, but... You're pregnant by daddy. You know, it is. It's pretty wild. Um, You know, and it's it's sad. That's so sad to me. And those people are so desperate to have it. And people like that, if they're that desperate to have a child, that they're willing to shell out that much money, I mean, fuck. Just give them a goddamn child, you know? (laughs) Those people, 
And I think right. earned it. You know, they've earned it. You know, what they spend in getting the child, they could invest into that child's future, and that right. future, that child's right. life. Right. Like, right. Exactly. It's just mind boggling. Right. And it's just like. And that's you know. like part of the like we have to make sure you're financially stable type bullshit. Like. Okay. Well, uh, well it would yeah. be one thing if they're like, "All right, this is going to cost about twenty thousand dollars," and they're like, "Okay, I can do that." Yeah. And then they go to do it, and they're like, "Just kidding. We just want to make sure you had twenty thousand dollars." No, <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh yeah, you got it. Okay. Like, no, they actually take their fucking money. It's like a refundable deposit that you get back <laughs> once you get the baby. <laughs> right. It's crazy. <laughs> it is. It's it's wild. And, you know, so people talk about, well, you know, don't abort because there's adoption and stuff like that. It's like, well, you know, there's not really because there's a lot of people that can't adopt anyway. They're exempt, you know, and um, like you can't be obese. Like you can't if you're obese, you can't adopt. And it's like, why? Why not? Oh, because you're you, you have health risks. So now you're saying that fat people don't deserve to have kids. You know, who, who's, who decides that? Um, you know, different things like, well, different risk factors if you have certain like genetic issues that run to your family no you can't adopt you know stupid shit and it's like and then you know if, if you're a single person trying to and that's another thing like most of the people that want babies are like single like they're unmarried people that are just they're you know it, they're time they're, they're time bomb their time clock is ticking you know they're older and you know if they don't do it now they won't do whatever but if you're single <laughs> you can't adopt i mean you can but it's ridiculously hard like, and it's like all this other extra criteria that you have to meet. And that's just insane. It's just insane. And so it's like, so guess what those people are going to do? They're going to go buy a baby off the black market. And <laughs> for whatever reason, the prices are still insane. It's, they're really low considering, I mean, five grand, you know, for a child is not much at all, you know, because then you've got people that are, you know, in a, you know, sex trafficking and stuff like that. that it's less than a car. Right. A human life. Right. Oh, I can buy this baby and groom it from birth. Okay. That's what we'll do. And I make a turnaround on it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and then we wonder why we have such a problem. And it's like, cause we don't want to fix the right issues. Like we want to focus on all the wrong things. And so it's like, you know, it just doesn't even... If people really knew, like, what a shit show uh, adoption and, and foster care was, especially foster care is just a whole nother... Anybody can foster a child, which is... Like, why? <laughs> why can anybody foster a child, but nobody's good enough to adopt one? Like, that's that's shitty as hell. You know, because they pay you to foster kids. Like, they give you money to have these kids. So it's like, most of the time, foster kids end up in a situation where... You know, guess what? They have this child that they really have can neglect completely and still get paid for it. You know, so it's kind of it's nice, I guess. You know, it, but it's really it's really sad. At least that's the way we do it here. Right. It's like me and my brother. We were in foster care, and um, we lived with a black couple. They had two kids of their own, but then there was also like. Me and him, and then usually, like, two others. They mm -hmm. almost always had, like, four kids at a time. Yeah. And, like, me and my brother were treated differently than the black kids. Yeah. And, like, you know, they got, like, um, vouchers for clothes and yeah. stuff like that. Well, they would take our vouchers and use it for, their for kids. the black kids yeah. or their biological children and we would go without and I mean yeah that's just clothes but like even when it came down to like food and stuff like right it was like that like my brother like you know how skinny he used to be I mean he's all muscle now but yeah he was literally like 130 pounds wow. and it was because they weren't feeding him they weren't allowing him to eat like I remember this one time our foster brother, he was black, and he went to go make a sandwich. And, you know, he just made a sandwich like you would. You put a bunch of meat, a bunch of cheese, right. whatever. You don't eat a sandwich for the bread. You eat it for the contents. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so Jonathan, he goes to make a sandwich, and my foster dad tells him, fucking, you can only use two pieces of meat and one piece of cheese. And it's like, yeah, it's like kind Standard, of stupid sure. but like 
you don't say anything else to, to the other kids making right. sandwiches up in here, you know. And like we we yeah. didn't have the as much freedom to do that either. Like me and Jonathan, we did all the yard work and like wow. clean the whole house and like they would all just hang out with yeah. each other essentially. And right. it's like you know, it was it was fucked up, but at the same time, like I ain't got nothing. Them kids ain't got nothing, so at least somebody's getting something, <laughs> you know. True. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I was in a foster home for, like, not even a year, and it was, I mean, it wasn't terrible. I mean, it wasn't great, uh, but they obviously only did it, you know, because it was a, it was a paycheck, and, yep. you know, they had, um, I, they had two kids of their own, and they had two adopted kids, and they had me and my sister, and, um, but they did it because it was easy money. Now, my sister... They kind of got the shit into the deal because they only really wanted my sister, but they had to take both of us. Um, my sister's deaf, so they would get her disability check. You know, on top of that, they'd get paid for fostering. And it was just, I mean, they hated my guts, and it was just very obvious. Like, I never got along with any of them. Well, I got along with the, with the brothers, but <laughs> that was <laughs> different story for a different day. Um, but, yeah. So, but we just, we didn't get along at all. They owned a church. We had to go to church every Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. <laughs> and it sucks. It was awful. Um, but whatever. I got to fuck at a church. That was cool. Um, <laughs> I was like a teenager. I was like 12 or 13. Um, so, I guess, I mean, I wasn't really a teenager. But, you know, my life's different. Um, <laughs> so, but it was, yeah. I mean, you know. And that, but that's when I learned, like, how the foster care system worked. I never, you know, I was a kid. I didn't really have a reason to know anything about it. But. That's how I found out. And, um, you know, it's, it's a harsh reality. Because I also went to a school. I think you guys have one locally here, but I had something different locally where I was. And I went to a school that was like a behavioral school. And yeah, so, I yeah. went to one of those. Right. Too. And so it was like, uh, you know, a bunch of troubled kids. And a lot of those kids were also in foster care. <laughs> Imagine that. And, you know, they all had the same shitty ass stories. So, like, I've never heard of one that was a good that was a good out, outcome for anybody, you know? And I'm sure they exist. The, the respite homes that right. were good. Right. <laughs> I remember right. this one time I went to a respite home and this lady, oh my God, I absolutely adored her. Like yeah. her whole house, like, was set up for kids. Like okay. they had like, I don't necessarily know what it's called, but it was like a bi-level, but only like half the house. Yeah. And it had like, a big like tall ceiling but like you could look over the railing and like see the living room and yeah. the kitchen and the whole upstairs was just like bean bags and like toy mats like she even had like arcade machines okay. <laughs> but like it was my third time going to a respite home and um like all the other ones were awful and then, like, when she picked me up, I was like, God, it's going to be the same way. Because she, like, had this, like, crappy old Geo. Oh, and, like, okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, fuck. Like, this isn't going to be fun. But then she, like, picks me up. And she's like, all right, well, let's go get you some stuff. Like, she bought me clothes. Bought me, like, toothbrush, okay. toothpaste. Like, everything. Because I didn't even yeah. have that stuff. Yeah. And so it was, like, really nice to have that and then we got to her house and it was just like well first when you walk in there is this giant picture of her and her husband in okay. her wedding dress she had this like giant fucking train okay and like it was it was just really beautiful but it was like seeing that and then like her house was huge and like in the country so it's like She's driving, like, a shitty old Geo, and then you get to her big night <laughs> house that's literally... It's because she spends it all on the house, girl. <laughs> yeah, she, she spends all the money on she the kids. gets for the kids, yeah, and it's kids, like, it was yeah. amazing, yeah. because, well, like... It's good I, that there's people out there that I right. like that, because most of them are not, and so... And I've, I thought about doing it, I've thought, you know, and I still might, you know, later in life, and... You know, if I foster any kids, I definitely want to foster more of the undesirables and, you know, because I know it's rough and I know that, you know, they're, they're difficult, um, and nobody wants them. So, <laughs> you know, but I'm definitely not in a place at the moment to be able to do something like that or invest that time into that. But, you know, I think it's my, 
my experience with being in a foster home that that makes me want to do that but then the hard part about it is like just like because like well i foster animals is you know you, you got to give them back at some point or you know mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta let them go at some point and and that's difficult now my i had a stepmom that my dad was with and she adopted uh all of her kids she couldn't have her own and so i think she had five and um hers were all fostered to adopt like so and hers were all difficult case kids now for the most part i'm pretty sure they've all turned out pretty well um except for one of them who they don't talk i don't know exactly i just think they never really bonded and you know she adopted him thinking that you know she could put the work in and he just never was receptive to the work and just i don't know they never got along and so but other than that I, well i think actually i think she, it was six kids i don't know she had a lot she did i think she did like three that three at some point and then like 10 years down the line did three more and so she would talk about how like she had the way that she had it set up was like she had the help of the older kids to help take care of the younger kids and you know so on and so forth so i don't know um you know but she had a system worked out and uh but she yeah she fostered to to adopt and so that's probably the cheapest way to go about doing it it's just for some reason a lot of people don't want to put in the work to do it they want babies people don't want kids they don't want teenagers they want babies and it's like okay then you're gonna pay out the ass for a baby and jump through all these hoops to get one i mean right and you it's know. still end up being <laughs> fucked up Right. (laughs) No matter what. Right. Because you're an asshole. (laughs) I don't know. You know, but yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, that's probably the best, the best way to go about it. But, you know, either way, don't fucking buy babies off the black market, guys. That's wrong. (laughs) You shouldn't, (laughs) you you shouldn't go for stolen babies. Um, Like I said, it's, it's almost impossible to do here. Um, I know people can kind of get away with it because you can kind of choose a little bit. I don't know. I've kind of looked into, like, what would happen if I, you know, decided I didn't want my child. It's like, you know, what, what, you know, what, what would happen then? And um, she would be passed through the ranks of the family. So she would have to be denied by her dad. And then she'd have to be denied by uh, both of our family members. I think it's, like, immediate... Um, like aunts, if she's got aunts and uncles, you know, grandparents, and then if nobody wanted her of all those people, um, then it, then she would go to somewhere else and at least, you know, being older. But like, if she was a baby, baby, I could have left the hospital and dropped her off at a fire station. And that was that, you know, which is weird, <laughs> but you know, I don't know why it changes once they get older, I guess, because you decided to commit a little bit. I don't know. Um, you know, either way, which I think is kind of fucked up. I think that, you know what, if you decide at some point in your life, I mean, yeah, it's wrong of you to decide that you don't want to have a child when they're, you know, two, three, four, whatever, you know, 13, whatever, you know, yeah, it is kind of wrong to then be like, oh, I don't want you anymore. Go to this random weird family. I kind of still think it's wrong for the court system to force you to keep that child within the family. Um, because obviously something is wrong with you and you know, you're not fit to take care of a child. If you randomly decide you're going to get rid of the one that you've already created and already, you know, met and bonded with, you know, or or didn't bond with or whatever, you know, this person. And so, you know, but I think that that would be traumatic for both you and the child. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a child care expert. You know, you see how I've done with mine. So... (laughs) She's not that bad. Um, but everybody probably thinks my child's like the worst child in the world because. Well, she just always acts talks out shit about when parenting. people are here. <laughs> that's all it is. She, she wants yeah, attention. Yeah, she's the center of attention. That's how she does. Just her. Which she'll go places, you know, she will. She'll be the president one day, but she needs to get her shit together to do it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but now I just talk so much shit about her. That's just how I cope with parenting. Um, like the joke I make about the hot car. I'm like, I'll just leave her in the car. You know what? She's eight. If she can't figure out that it's hot and she needs to open the door and get out, then she deserves it. <laughs> and that's wrong. I don't mean it, guys. I'm not. I, I'm not a bad person. I promise. <laughs> I try. <laughs> 
But yeah, I just, you know, it is a very fascinating story. Um, You know, I do recommend checking out the show. Um, You know, especially if you're mildly familiar with adoption and things like that. Um, Because, you know, you got two angles here. You got people that were stolen as babies. And then you also have these people dealing with the fact that they are adopted. I mean, that by itself is a whole other thing. And not just that, but these people are finding out at an old age. I mean, they're older. And, you know, she says it all the time. There's not much time left to to do this. You know, uh, Dr. Hicks, he eventually was, um, uh, he was charged. He was indicted on charges for um, performing illegal abortions. And um, he agreed to give up his medical license. And they did not charge him with anything after that. Um, so he did stop practicing. I mean, he's dead now. Um, well, and before that, he was doing some criminal shit. He was on pain pills. Oh, that's trips, right. And then that's right. he actually went to prison for it. And wow. then when he got out, he worked for, I think it was a Tennessee minor company. And he was basic. well, he while he was in prison, he was looking into, like, a disease that affects predominantly minors. And so then he, you know, worked for a mining company and was treating more miners than there actually were. Yeah. Got caught and was fired. Oh, so it's like, right. so he's just got a long history of some right. shady shit. Yeah. Well, right. And then he is that why he took off to Georgia? I mean, I'm Probably. really not sure. You know, so he goes there and he ends up, you know, being a an OBGYN and um. It, you know, is performing these illegal... And he would advertise on, yeah. like, phone booths and, and walls. Bus stations. And, right, all kinds well, of they, stuff. they even had a he landing strip there. for, like, <laughs> what? big people, like, with money and shit. To come in and... Yeah, and, I mean, he was really respected throughout the town. Well, we kind of see that in the, sh- in the show. You know, we see her investigating and she's just... It's just her at first and she just goes into this little tiny town... And starts asking people if they knew who Dr. Hicks was. And they're like, oh, yeah, he's so great and wonderful. You know, a lot of people have a hard time believing that he did anything nefarious. In fact, a lot of people think that what he was doing was a great thing. You know, it was, it, it, it was he was, you know, instead of aborting these babies, he was giving them a second chance at life. You know, and it's like, well, it just depends on how far he went with the aborting of the, or, or with, the, uh, with the, with the baby stealing. Because... Like we found out again, one of the children ended up being the mayor's daughter. So, you know, he was probably paid off by the mayor, you know, with that one. And then he was paid by the woman <clears throat> to have, quote unquote, had an abortion because he would charge them too to have the abortion. And then turned around and sold the baby at a price. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. If you don't think the guy is a piece of shit, I mean, something obviously wrong with you. Um, well, there was that one lady that even paid for the like the stay of one of the mothers that was having an abortion yeah so yeah. it's like he probably charged the mother that was having the abortion and then also took the money from right the parent that right the person that, that was the trying baby. to buy the baby yeah yeah so i mean he was he was making good money you know he was already a doctor anyway it's not like he needed it so, I mean, but he was willing to do it. And, you know, so people flocked to him to do it. And, but, you know, that's just, that's what happens. See, this, this is what happens. Um, let's get down to the, to the meat of it. I mean, shit, this is what happens when we don't regulate abortions. When we just say, nope, bam, and we, and we make them illegal. And we don't actually have rules in place to make sure that these are done the way that they're supposed to be done. Then you have people that are performing, you know, Supposed legal abortion, uh, you know, or, you know, supposed illegal abortions, and then they're free to do whatever they want with those, you know, with those babies. And so in this case, he didn't kill them, he just sold them. Um, you know, but in other cases, then you have, you know, people that will sell the aborted fetuses to in the black market for, um, you know, stem cell research and things like that. So when you don't regulate these things, then you've got that kind of shady shit going on in the background because people are going to find a way to do it. You know, that's, and that's just the way it is. Doesn't matter what your stance is on abortion. Um, if somebody wants one bad enough, they're going to get one. Well, then we have people like, which of course, you know, she probably could have figured some alternative, but we've got, what's her name? Um, Brooke Richards. Was that her name? Brooke something. 
The girl in New Carlisle that buried her baby in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody knew she was pregnant, supposedly, and <laughs> she has this baby. Yeah. So, well, so she, she set says. up a stillborn. Yeah, it was stillborn, so she she put it she so she buried it in the backyard. No harm, no foul. And she's you know walking free, able to live her life the way she and she fucking she don't just like live her life the way I mean she like. She's on social media, and she's, like, taking pictures with her and her brand new car and all this other fucked up shit. And it's like, you know, the theory with that is that the family knew that she was pregnant and that they knew she was going to have this baby and that they possibly intentionally killed the baby um, in order to conceal it because they had some type of status in little teeny tiny New Carlisle, Ohio. And didn't want people to find out that their daughter was pregnant. That their teenage daughter was pregnant. And it's like, when you look at, like, that was like a case that I followed all the way through. And when you look at, like, the text messages and stuff between, like, her and her mom and, like, her, well, mainly her mom. I mean, it seems pretty obvious. Because the doctor even called, because she went to the doctor and had a pregnancy test. She was pregnant. And they said, okay, we have, you know, we need to set up an appointment for you. Come on in. And the doctor either called or sent an email or something to her mom, to the mom, which they weren't technically supposed to do, um, but the mom then confronts her daughter via text message and is like, oh, you're pregnant? She's like, no, I don't know what they're talking about. And she's like, okay. And then, like, after, like, two days after she had the baby, she took, like, a selfie of herself. And, like, she had a really bad eating disorder. And a lot of people think that her mom kind of fueled the eating disorder because she took the selfie and her mom's like, oh, my gosh, you're looking so thin. It's so wonderful. And so it's like, her mom knew. She knew. And she had the baby in the the upstairs bathroom of the home. And supposedly nobody heard her having a baby. Nobody, not a single person in the entire home heard her have this baby for labor in the bathroom for hours on end having a baby. I've had a baby. (laughs) It fucking sucks. (laughs) Like, you can't be quiet during childbirth. It's just not... It's not, I right. mean, there's it's no not modesty involved. Right, but... no, no, you don't give a fuck about anything. Like, <laughs> like literally, your hips are being torn apart. The bones come apart from each other. And then <laughs> your skin comes apart from itself. <laughs> you rip and tear and it's awful. <laughs> you know, it's a horrible experience. So, you know, I don't know why people keep having them. <laughs> I had the one, the whole thing sucked. Pregnancy sucked. The whole thing fucking sucked. All the way through, all nine months. Then I had her. Fucking childbirth. It's awful. It's <laughs> right. so like, by the time my mom had me, she was like, C-section. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just cut it out. Yeah. You know, the first three months of even having a baby, it fucking sucks. They don't do anything. They just lay there. <laughs> They're boring. <laughs> they do. Mm-hmm. They, just lay, they just lay around. And, like, you're told that, like, your whole life's going to change and all this bullshit. It's like, man, I wish somebody told me that, like, literally nothing would happen for the first three months of my baby's life. Because I could have done so much. <laughs> but I felt like I couldn't take her anywhere. I couldn't do anything. And she just laid there. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know, she'd eat and she'd poop and she'd cry and she'd sleep and that was it. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I don't know why you guys keep having them. <laughs> and now she's eight. She's worse than ever. So <laughs> a monster. She talks back and everything. She's rude. <laughs> so anyway, but no, right? I mean, so I mean, shit like that happens though when you don't normalize stuff like abortion. And, and no, I'm not saying people shouldn't have them done as like birth control. That's absolutely not the way it should work. Right. That's not healthy. <laughs> right. But like nobody is using abortion as birth control. Like maybe somebody has had an abortion because they got pregnant accidentally. Sure. But like I'm telling you, they're going to take measures the next time to make sure that doesn't happen again. Abortions are not fun. Like they're not. It's not a fun, great, easy procedure. It, it sucks. <laughs> And, you know, nobody's doing that. So it's like, and I'm I'm not going to get into abortions and things like that. But, you know, I'm just saying we need the the laws to to regulate it the way that it should be regulated. So, I mean, and then we wouldn't, we would have less crimes like, you know, black market babies and, you know, backdoor abortions and, and things like that. Um, you know, so that's that's what I think about it. I don't know. You got any more thoughts on the Hicks babies? Not really. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a pretty well. It's not very cut and dry. I mean, there's still a lot to it. There's you know, like I said, they're still reuniting these people with their families. Um, 
So I mean, if, if they're that, still alive, if they're still alive, or at least able to DNA test, they have the the Hicks DNA now. So that, like I said, right now their focus is comparing that DNA to well, it, you know, it's kind of fun. It's been really fun watching the the investigation break down because I understand because I'm investigating for my own you know thing, my documentary and stuff, and it is a lot of cold calls and knocking on doors and you know getting you know getting real personal with people that you don't know and like so and it is very relatable and especially when you're talking about things like like that when you're talking about really heavy subject matters um so i can you know i can relate to it all but you know as an investigator i i enjoy watching it but i tell you what that jane blasio that is the most Karen ass Karen I have ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. They got Karen on they the case. They put page. Karen on that case. Yes, they did. <laughs> and guess what? She's getting it done. <laughs> She's out there. Karen's out there doing her thing. I'm just I'm shocked that that her name isn't Karen. I mean, it just it's amazing to me because she, like like I said, she's Karen Blasio. Yeah, sounds got Karen a nice Blasio. To it. it sounds. I mean, who would know the difference? You know. I but, think the the best person in that series though is that one old lady. I've been here oh for my years. <laughs> Come on in. Just, I don't remember her convenient. name. Yeah, the oh. oldest lady in the whole town, I think. I don't know if that's... I, hope I, don't, she's still alive. I don't remember what the tie was to her. Why they? Maybe because she was one of the oldest living people in the town. and I don't know, but she, that lady, let me tell you what, she has found not only the, the fountain of youth, but she's found the key to happiness because <laughs> you couldn't tell her nothing to bring her down. <laughs> She was so sweet. She had cute little braids in her hair. I was like, did she do those? That's adorable. <laughs> she probably didn't, but <laughs> I hope she did. I don't know. She might still be alive. They've started this investigation back in 2014 is when they started. Yeah. And so um, so she could be. I don't know if she is. If anybody knows that that old lady is alive, let us know and we'll come down to Georgia and visit. <laughs> like, she's, I want I her to adopt come me. Come on, <laughs> She would. <laughs> She wouldn't know who we are. Yeah, just come on in. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. All right, guys. Well, I think we're gonna go ahead and end it for this week. Um, you know, I've got I've got this busy week coming up with the uh, or the busy weekend rather. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention was that the um, oh, fuck. So maybe I'll have to push my weekend off. The the conjoined twins, the local conjoined twins, their funeral is this Friday, and I I might go mm-hmm. to it. I think I'm going to go. Now, I think they've done separate services for, like, family, and then they've done one for, like, community, um, because they're, like, local celebrities. People know who they are, and so I might go. But I told somebody about it, and they were like, why aren't they buried yet? Like, it's been a while. <laughs> they're not wrong. I think I think they died in June. <laughs> and their funeral is this Friday. <laughs> So, I don't know. You know, I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to do it. We're supposed to leave Friday to go down to West Virginia, so I don't know if um, I don't know if I'll be able to go, but I'm going to try. Um, but, anyway, all right, guys. Well, we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.